let's talk all about calendula. Is it in your herbal medicine chest? Hello beautiful people, thank you for popping down to see what's happening down on the farm today. I thought it was about time I got back into my herbal medicine studies and bring some more videos on them which I haven't been doing because I'm slack. <laughs> so today I'm doing one on calendula as you can probably see. It is a really great thing to have in your preps. I am actually going to be um, making little um, single serve type things, I guess you could say, in my lab bags to put into our trauma kit and other places. So you've got a certain amount put away. You just have to open the bag and do what you're going to do. These are actually from my garden. I've got two calendula plants in at the moment. They're beautiful flowers as well and attract bees. So two in one deal there. So must remind you guys, I'm not a naturopath or a homeopath. I have been studying um, herbs for a while. I also have a beautiful book that was gifted to me by my goddaughter. Um, her mum was actually studying natural medicine. So this is, is actually the herbal one. I also think I've got iridology and a few other books of her mum's. So why is calendula such a good thing to have in your preps? Calendula is pretty good all-round herb, so it's also um, an anaesthetic, antiseptic, I should say. <laughs> it can also help prevent muscle spasms, start menstrual periods, reduce fever. It's also good for treating a sore throat. I think I might need some of that. I think I'm coming down with a little bit of laryngitis. Ramesses, excuse me, one of the cats was being naughty. Yeah, my voice is rather hoarse today. So, what were we up to? Sore throat, um, or you know, sore mouth, you've got toothache, um, mouth ulcers, etc. Um, it's also good for um, menstrual cramps, stomach ulcers, duodenal ulcers. It's also very good to, for the skin. Ramesses! He's being a very naughty boy. Excuse the naughty boy. boy. Um, Calendra is actually really, really good on your skin as well. So it can be used to reduce pain and swelling and inflammation. Um, it can help to treat poorly healing wounds. It's um, also good for leg ulcers. It can also be used for nosebleed, varicose veins, hemorrhoids, inflammation of the rectum and inflammation of the lining of the eyelid in conjunctivitis. It is also a great source to stop bleeding, which can be very helpful in a STHF situation. So from what I've been studying, calendula is, doesn't have any great um, contraindications, which some herbs do. They have contraindications with certain things. For example, uh, St. John's wort, you cannot take, no, yeah, St. John's wort, you cannot take antidepressants with. It is 
very much contraindicated. So um, in this beautiful book that I've got from my goddaughter, it actually has a section in there of history and folklore, which I think is pretty cool, knowing the history of the plant. So <clears throat> this well-known garden plant is probably one of the most popular and useful of all herbs and a definite favourite of herbalists. It has valuable medicinal properties, it yields a yellow dye and can be used as a culinary herb and for cosmetic purposes. It has been used in the Mediterranean region since the ancient Greeks and it was known to Indian and Arabic cultures before the Greeks. The botanical name comes from the Latin calendula or calendes meaning throughout the months, which was intended to emphasis on the very long flowering period of the marigold. Uh, Mace's 12th century herbal recommendations simply look at the plant, uh, look, looking at the plant to improve eyesight, clear the head and encourage, encourage cheerfulness. In Cold Pepper's day, marigold was taken it is part of the marigold family, but is completely different to marigold that we grow in the garden. That's not medicinal. Um, it was in Karl Popper's day, it was taken to strengthen the heart and was highly re regarded for smallpox and measles. Today, it is widely used in patients, uh, patent home homeopathic remedies. So it's a pretty good herb. But yes, it's an anti-inflammatory, an astringent, antispasmodic, antifungal, and local tissue healer. So how do we use calendula? I'll take my little flowers away. Give me a bit more room. So... Excuse me, I'm getting a dry mouth. Okay, I've got this beautiful thing that Agent bought me for one of my birthdays that I drink my tea out of. So having something like this can also double because it's got the, those chickens. I'm doing my head in today. So it's got a strainer in it, okay. So what you can do if you need to use it. So you put your calendula in. Come back here. It's about one or two tablespoons, depending on you and what you're treating. I have boiled some water. So I just pop the water in there. So that we can steep the beautiful stuff out of the calendula. And then I'll just pop that on and we wait. Normally you wait about, I'm not going to wait that long this time, um, between five to ten minutes. So, okay. What else can I tell you about it? It's actually, well, actually, I'll tell you first about this calendula that I got. So I love this herb company, Happy Herb Company. Um, these, these are going to end up in, in individual packs, in first aid kits, etc. But they also give you how to use it and what it can help as well. So, so you go, there's extra information there that it's helpful for relieving gallbladder problems, helps reduce bile, valuable for digestive information and inflammation and ulcers. So, you know, help, help with fungal infections and strains, etc. So I love it how they give you all this 
on their packages. That's why I always buy from them. And they do have some really good prices as well. I actually need to put another order in. So, <clears throat> so I've told you basically what you can do with it. How do you take it? Okay. So you can drink it as a tea. You can apply it to the skin um, as a poultice. If anyone doesn't know what a poultice is, you can, what you do is, I've got calendula flowers everywhere. So you grab yourself a chucks or some muslin, even a sock, if that's all you've got. And you're trying to stop bleeding or something. I'm not going to actually do it because it's still steeping. But you can imagine this is done. You just pull it out, let it drain, and then you've got... It helps if I put the camera over there, doesn't it? So then you've got two for the price of one in there because you can use your leaves. And then you've also got all this beautiful liquid that you can use as well, whether you're using it as um, an antiseptic for the wound that you're treating, or you've got an upset stomach as well. You can treat something on, on your body externally and then treat something else internally. So it's a good value herb. So if you're making a poultice, all you do is, I'll do it with the dry herbs. Let's say grab your a bit of muslin. And I'm going to put this other stuff back in the cup because I'm going to use that myself. Put that away. So imagine you've been steeping that for about 10 minutes or whatever. Just put that into the centre of your muslin or whatever. Draw it all up. Like so, you don't have to tie anything into it because you're making a poultice. Just give it a few twists, turn it over. There's your poultice. You put that on your wound, say that one I've got on my hand, put that on there and then attach it. I'm not going to even attempt trying to put a bandage on that, but grab yourself like a bandage, wrap it around, stick it on there. So it's going to act to heal the sore. It will also help to stop the bleeding. So if there's a situation where you need to stop bleeding, you can use more of it and make a bigger poultice and bigger bandages, if you know what I mean. So that's the beautiful calendula. Many, 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 many uses. But as I said, please do your own research. I've done the research for my family and what will work for my family. You've got to decide what you need to put into your medical preps or just even if you're not a prepper and you want to work with herbs, you decide which ones that you want to have in your home and what to use it for. It's really good to get all round herbs like calendula. Very nice. So that's still steeping. Like so. And you've got that beautiful tea in the bottom that you can drink, which I probably will. So there you go, folks. I'm not going to bore you. I've given you a little bit of a rundown on what calendula does. Many, many uses. So have a read up yourself. Um, there is actually good information on calendula on the internet. But as I said, say all the time, make sure you've got hard copies of everything. Because what happens if SHTF does hit the fan? You probably won't have any in internet and you're going to be going, hmm, all my information's on my computer. 
or on the internet. Start printing, start buying, start prepping. So if you like what you're seeing, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you have liked the content and want to see some more. And don't forget to tickle that bell. I shall see you soon with a new video. Take care, guys. See ya.